Hey Cool Worlds, it's David. So the last couple of weeks we've had a lot of fun thinking about what on earth is going on with Tabby's star right now. How can we explain these strange dips in brightness? And so people have been thinking about all kinds of exotic phenomena which might explain it. And one of them I noticed in the comments was the idea of perhaps a black hole. So today I thought it would be fun to talk about what would it look like if a black hole passed in front of another star. But first a quick refresher, if a dark solid object passes in front of a luminous star, then it will block out some of that star's light for a short amount of time. An event known as a primary eclipse, also called a transit. The amount of light which is blocked is simply the sky projected area of whatever it is that's doing the blocking relative to that of the star itself. If both objects are spheres, then that's basically the ratio of radii squared. In fact, on August 21st this year, Americans will be treated to an eclipse up close and personal during the Great American Eclipse. And in that case, it will actually look like a total eclipse just because we are so darn close to the moon. Okay, so what happens if we now replace our planet with a black hole instead? Well, first off, you wanna make sure this black hole isn't too close to the star, else the tidal effects from the black hole can actually devour the star. But once we're out of harm's way and we're far enough away from the star, let's ask the question, how does the star's brightness change over time as this black hole is passing in front of the star. Now the black hole isn't really a solid object, it's more like a hole punched through space-time. Despite not really having a physical size, the black hole will still block out some small fraction of the light which happens to pass within its so-called event horizon. This is the volume of space around the black hole singularity from which even light itself cannot escape. If the black hole is not rotating, then we call this event horizon distance the Schwarzschild radius. And for a black hole with about 10 times the mass of our own sun, this distance is a measly 30 kilometers. Now something that small is only gonna block out a very tiny amount of light, something like two parts per billion if it was passing in front of the sun. But this is only part of the story because black holes are massive objects that can actually bend the path of light coming off the star. More importantly, the fact that their event horizons are so close to the singularity means that light can actually get very, very close to the singularity where the gravity is strongest and thus give us a very pronounced bending of the light. Similar to a magnifying glass which bends light using refraction, a black hole is able to magnify the light coming from behind it, an effect known as gravitational lensing. It turns out that overall, this magnifying effect is actually stronger than the blocking out effect, meaning, quite bizarrely, that a transiting black hole does not appear as a decrease in brightness as a planet would do, but rather it appears as an increase in the star's brightness. If you could get real close by flying past in a spaceship, you'd be treated to all sorts of weird optical illusions as this black hole transits the star. But of course, from our vantage point here on the Earth, all of those beautiful details are lost and we would just see this magnification effect alone. Unfortunately, we have never detected an example of a transiting black hole. I mean, that would be really cool. But we have detected an example of a transiting gravitational lens in the form of another object called a white dwarf. Stars much more massive than the sun have such intense gravitational forces that when they die, they actually collapse all the way down into a black hole. But for lower mass stars, like our sun, this will not happen. Instead, they collapse down to a point where the gravitational forces balance out the subatomic forces resisting further compression an effect known as electron degeneracy pressure. This means that we are left with a dead star which has collapsed down to the size of, say, the Earth, rather than the size of, say, a few kilometers in the case of a black hole. And these Earth-sized dead stars are what we call white dwarfs. Now, because massive stars are far rarer than their lightweight counterparts, then there are far more white dwarf stars in the universe than there are black holes. So, we might expect to occasionally see one of these white dwarfs transit in front of a normal star. And indeed, we have detected that. And in this case, one can see another example of a gravitational lensing effect. In a lovely paper by Ethan Cruz and Eric Agol, they discovered a binary star system called KOI 3278, discovered with the Kepler Space Telescope, 
which comprises of a normal star and one of these dead white dwarfs. The two stars are separated by about the distance that Mercury orbits our own Sun. And that's enough of a distance for this gravitational lensing effect to come into play. Although we're not talking about a black hole here, we are talking about a tiny object with the mass of a star. And thus light can get very close to the center of mass of that star, leading to very pronounced bending of light. What's cool is that the amplitude of this brightening actually allows you to weigh the mass of this dead star, and it turns out to be about 63% the mass of our own sun, which confirms why we think this is not a black hole and this is a white dwarf star. Whilst KY 3278 represents a pure brightening event, before that detection, actually astronomers already knew about white dwarfs transiting stars at closer separations, where you're able to see still a decrease in the brightness of light, but a smaller decrease in the brightness of light than you would expect, given its size. In other words, the gravitational lensing effect is not enough to cause a pure inverted transit because of the close separation, but it is enough to slightly dilute, to shallow out the transit depths that you see. It's kind of fun to imagine, but for the right choice of parameters, you can actually have this magnification effect perfectly cancel out the blocking out effect, giving you a perfect flat line for the brightness of your star, despite the fact there's a transit happening. And that is actually a pretty effective cloaking device, although I think our idea earlier last year about using lasers might be a little bit more technologically feasible. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed hearing about what a black hole would look like if it transited in front of a star. If you have any questions about this video or any suggestions for things you'd like us to talk about on this channel, then make sure to put them down below in the comments section. Next week, we should have a video for you about some brand new research coming out of the Cool Worlds Lab, so make sure you stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, then of course, do make sure you click the subscribe button. And until the next video, stay thoughtful and stay curious. Millions and millions of black holes Zipping around our galaxy Nothing there to light them up Millions and millions of black holes